If you have watched our previous springtail video about how we make our clay colonies, you may remember me mentioning that I have heard some people have used phasmidfras to make thriving springtail colonies. But do frass colonies really work? I myself have never used insect frass specifically for the substrate of springtail cultures, and I always have an abundant amount of the stuff from Extatosoma tiaritum, so I thought, why not give it a go and see what happens? So I grabbed all of my materials, which consisted of a pestle and mortar, a heck load of stick insect frass, a water sprayer, a container for mixing, a container for the springtail colony, and of course, springtails. Now, the person that originally mentioned the frass colonies to me didn't specifically go out of their way to make a frass colony but rather made this discovery by chance. This person hadn't cleaned their Extatosoma tiaritum cage for a few weeks, but when they finally went to clean it out, found hundreds of springtails living amongst the frass. Even though these springtails were living in what I assume were whole semi-dried pieces of frass, I decided to try to use the frass like I would use clay and to put the frass on all sides and bottom of the container. But to do this, I first needed to turn the stick insect frass into a paste-like substance so that it can stick to the sides. So, I grabbed my pestle and mortar and ground it away at a heap of giant prickly stick insect frass until all the pieces were crushed. I then mixed water into the mix until it was a paste-like consistency. I then tried to stick the frass paste on the sides of a container, but it wasn't sticking the way I had hoped, so I just put the paste on the bottom of the container. And then I harvested some springtails from my isopod colonies. And would you look at how beautiful that Calico Pasalioscaper is. I then put the frass springtail colony aside to check up on it later to see how well it thrives. But when I checked up on it not even five hours later, every little springtail was unfortunately perished. What went wrong? The stick insects that pooped out the frass that I used specifically only ate eucalyptus leaves. Eucalyptus can be found in pesticide control to deter unwanted pests. And by grounding up the frass and then adding water to make a paste, I really increased the frequency of the eucalyptus and by the looks of it also increased the potency. Because the container is airtight with no ventilation, the springtails practically got gassed to death by the eucalyptus fumes. Would have the springtail colony worked if I didn't make a paste and just used whole frass, like what I would assume was used in the original finding? I don't think it would have worked whether the frass was a paste or just solid pieces of frass, because either way, the colony would still be in an airtight container, so the fumes would still just build up over time, 
just probably at a slower rate compared to the paste. And there's no way I could have put ventilation in that container without the springtails escaping. Now remember, in the original finding, the springtails were found in a stick insect cage, meaning there was ventilation, so therefore no risk of eucalyptus fumes building up. And then there's even the possibility that the Ecstatosoma tiaritum from the original finding weren't even fed a diet of eucalyptus leaves, since giant prickly stick insects can eat other types of leaves that aren't eucalyptus, including rose, oak and bramble. Let's message them now to see if their phasmids were also fed eucalyptus just like mine. Two weeks later. Unfortunately, it has been quite a few weeks since I messaged this person, and I have yet to hear back from them, so I guess the diet of their phasmids that inspired this video will always be a mystery. Although this video has left some questions unanswered, from this experiment alone, I would say frass springtail colonies don't work and there are plenty of better and more efficient ways to colonise your springtails.